Hello, I am Dr. Chirag Thakkar and I am here today to talk to you about inguinal hernia and its surgery. I can understand that you must be having lot many questions. Like what is hernia? Should I get the surgery done? Is surgery the only treatment option? Should I go for an open surgery or laparoscopic surgery? How would be things before and after surgery? When can I start working, exercise, driving, etc. Let's talk about all these things in detail today. Hernia is basically an abnormal protrusion of abdominal contents like intestine, fat and urinary bladder through the area of weakness in your abdominal wall that is the wall of your tummy. It presents as a bulge on coughing, lifting weight and walking. It may also cause pain. Normally the bulge comes out and goes back on its own. With time it may get stuck there and stop going back inside which is a big problem and you should immediately see a doctor. If the weakness is in the groin muscles, it is called an inguinal hernia. If it is at the navel, it is called an umbilical hernia. And if at the site of previous abdominal surgery, an incisional hernia. The protruding intestine resides in what is called a hernia sac. Normally, the intestine goes back in the tummy, but when a part of intestine gets stuck in the hernia opening, its blood supply may be cut off leading to gangrene of intestine. This is called an obstructed or strangulated hernia. This is one of the complications of hernia and mandates an emergency surgery. This is the reason why we advise an elective or planned hernia surgery to you. If you are asking can it be treated by medications, the answer is no. Surgery is the only treatment option for hernia. You should understand that a hole in your tummy wall cannot be repaired with medications. It needs to be repaired with stitches and a mesh. But among surgery you do have an option of open or laparoscopic surgery. Also an option of general or local anesthesia. Laparoscopic surgery is always done under general anesthesia while open surgery can be done under both local or general anesthesia. In general anesthesia you are completely put to sleep while in local anesthesia only the area of surgery is made numb with injections. You will be awake and fully aware of the things happening in your surrounding. You can even move your limbs, but there will be no pain. This reduces the general anesthesia related complications. If you are having a major heart, lung or kidney problem, we would advise you for an open hernia surgery under local anesthesia. As you will be awake, you need to be mentally prepared for it and we would need your cooperation during the surgery. Now let's talk about the difference in open and laparoscopic inguinal hernia surgery. There is a general myth that for hernia surgery laparoscopy is not a good option and you should go for an open hernia surgery. This myth started years back when surgeons were lacking adequate skills required for laparoscopic hernia surgery. But in today's time with excellent laparoscopic surgical skills and technologic advances, this myth doesn't stand true. The traditional open inguinal hernia surgery requires a relatively large single incision. Laparoscopic inguinal hernia surgery requires three tiny keyhole incision or puncture wounds which results in less pain and faster recovery period. Laparoscopic surgery is superior especially when the hernia has developed again after a previous open hernia surgery what we call a recurrence of open surgery. It is also superior if you are having hernia on both sides of your groin, what we call a bilateral hernia. It is so because both sides can be repaired through the same three tiny incisions like a single sided hernia, while for open surgery, you require two large groin incisions. Laparoscopic surgery is done under general anesthesia, which will put you to sleep for the duration of the operation. You are supposed to be fasting for at least 6 hours before the scheduled time of surgery. Though, you need to take your regular heart or blood pressure medications with sips of water if they are routinely scheduled during these 6 hours. As you will be fasting, you need not take your diabetes medications. You should confirm this with your doctor if you have any doubt. If you are on blood thinning medications, you should ask your doctor whether you need to stop them before surgery. A breathing tube will be placed through your mouth into your throat to help you breathe during the operation. A catheter may also be placed in your bladder to drain urine. This will be removed at the end of the surgery before you wake up from anesthesia. 
To gain access to the hernia opening, we will use sharp instruments called trocars to create three small holes in your tummy called ports. The location of these ports will depend on the type of hernia and our preference. One of these ports is usually located at the navel or the umbilicus. Carbon dioxide gas is then pumped through the umbilical port to puff up your tummy. This helps us to clearly view the contents and also gives us space to complete the surgery. Next, we will insert a laparoscope through the umbilical port. Images from its camera are projected on the monitor in the operating room. We will then pass various instruments through other ports which will be used to dissect away the hernia sac and to tack a piece of mesh over the hernia opening. Special instruments called tackers are used to fix the mesh. This will prevent the intestine from slipping back to the opening. A port valve is briefly left open to allow all the carbon dioxide gas to escape from your tummy. Finally, the keyhole incisions are closed with sutures and covered with bandages. An uncomplicated laparoscopic inguinal hernia surgery usually takes 45 to 60 minutes. After surgery, your breathing tube and catheter will be removed and you will be taken to the recovery room for monitoring. You will be given enough pain medications as needed. You will feel a bit sleepy immediately after operation due to the sedative medications given during anesthesia. You should try to move your limbs and sit up soon after surgery. Most patients can walk and go to the toilet in 4 to 5 hours after surgery. There are no restrictions whatsoever for physical movement. In fact, majority of the patients will feel much better after they have started movement. The pain also reduces dramatically once you start sitting up, moving and walking. You are allowed liquids orally after 4 hours of surgery. In case you vomit, there is nothing to worry. We will stop giving you liquids and restart it after 30 minutes. Liquids may include water, tea, coffee, milk, juices, soup and dal water. If you are diabetic, you should take liquids allowed by your diabetologist. You can start all your regular heart, blood pressure and diabetes medications once you start taking liquid. You are allowed meals from the next day morning. You should have small and frequent meals for the first few days after surgery before going to your normal diet. This is vital because you may feel bloated and full if you eat large quantities of food at a time in the first few days after surgery. We routinely discharge the patient next day morning. Hospital stay may be prolonged for patients with heart, lung or kidney disease as per their disease status. You can take shower from the next day of surgery. Usually there are no stitches to be removed and you will only require a wound dressing in the follow-up consultation. You can resume your routine household and office work in a couple of days as you feel comfortable. You can drive a car or a two-wheeler in few days can walk as much as you want and can climb a couple of flights of stairs. This is in fact one of the major advantages of laparoscopic surgery. There are certain precautions to be taken to prevent recurrence of hernia. You should avoid lifting weight and rigorous exercise for the first 3 months of surgery. Persistent cough, constipation and urinary problem should be treated urgently with advice from your doctor. Hope you have got the answers to your questions. If you have any further question, you can meet me with prior appointment. Feel free to ask any question that may come to your mind. To book an appointment, call 079-2970-3438 or 84693-27634 or log on to www.drchiragthakkar.com or email me at drchiragthakkar1307 at the rate gmail.com Wishing you a happy and a healthier life ahead. Let the inner healthier person come out of yourself.